Chapter 6, Intellectual Property, Part 4, Trademarks. The learning outcomes include, explain how trademarks fit within the IP portfolio, explore how to obtain trademark rights, evaluate how technology impacts protection of trademarks, articulate trademark infringement, analyze who has priority in registering a domain name, Trademark is one of the tools that an organization may choose to use to protect its intellectual property. A trademark is a distinctive sign or indicator of some kind that is used by an individual, business, or organization. The trademark allows a consumer to uniquely identify the product and know its value. A trademark distinguishes one product from another. Trademarks are registered through the Lanham Act, originally passed in 1946. U.S. trademarks are registered through the Patent and Trademark Office. Trademarks are words, names, symbols, or devices that identify the source of the product or services. They may be renewed forever as long as the mark is in use and as long as it's renewed as required by the PTO. When you register a mark in the U.S., you provide notice that you own the intellectual property associated with the mark and that nobody else should use it. Here are a few examples. Remember that a trademark is a name, word, phrase, logo, symbol, design, image, or a combination of these elements. Do you recognize some of these symbols? You know what to expect when you buy these products or services, don't you? Here are a few other distinctive marks. Let's look at the goals of trademark policies. First, trademark policies enhance the efficient distribution of goods and services. You and I don't have to search for the right product. We know it when we see it. And competitors are allowed to copy your product along any dimension except for the exclusive mark. Thus, we have Coca-Cola and Pepsi and Cola O and Big K Cola and so forth. The bottles are similar and they are packaged in similar manners, but I know what I'm getting. Second, marks help you identify the quality of your product and set consumer expectations. We don't want consumers to think they are purchasing our product and to get an inferior product. Those Gucci purchase, purses in New York City for $20, guess what? They aren't real. And Gucci wants you to know that you're not getting the real thing, but an inferior product that's being palmed off on you. Finally, good trademark policies protect the goodwill of the mark that we're using. We don't allow Pepsi to use a symbol that looks so much like Coke that we will be confused. Organizations are recommended to adopt strong marks where possible. Strong marks are fanciful and aren't necessarily associated with a product or services. Weak marks are more generic and you don't know exactly what you're getting. For instance, Exxon is a fanciful name for a gas company. It's not something that's generic and Exxon is a made up word. In contrast, Best Buy is fairly generic and Microsoft is a combination of microcomputers and software. The more generic, the less protection your mark has. Well, why aren't generic marks allowed? If they were, I couldn't call my laptop a laptop or my shirt a shirt without paying you a fee. An example is the old you've got mail sound that was iconic for America Online, AOL, one of the first companies to offer email and internet services. There was a little boom, 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 and then a voice said, you've got mail. It meant that you could then start to download your email and go make dinner and take a nap and come back and read the message. It wasn't that bad, but access was much slower 20 or so years ago. Ex experts argue over whether or not Windows should be a generic term and not a registered mark. While they were talking about how you view the icons on your personal, com personal, personal computer, it still looks like Windows. No matter your thoughts on Taylor Swift, some love her and some hate her, take a look at the video on what all she has trademarked. She's a very smart person and has gotten some good legal advice over the years, as this video shows. 
When your mark becomes generic, it loses its identity as your product. For instance, Xerox became an iconic symbol that meant making a copy of anything at all on any copier. I'm going to Xerox something. If your nose is running, what do you reach for? A Kleenex or a facial tissue? Do you want a first aid bandage or a band-aid? A thermos of coffee or an insulated beverage container of coffee? An aspirin for your headache or acetyl salicylic acid? Jump on a trampoline or a bouncing mat? Want some chapstick for your dry lips or a creamy lip moisturizing lotion? In the IT universe, are you going to perform an internet search to find your answer or Google it. By becoming generic, you may lose the distinctiveness of the mark while becoming so popular that you sell more. When you re-register, you have to argue why your mark isn't generic and how it identifies your product. There have been several notable disputes over trademark prote protection for technology. If the shape and appearance of the design is used to identify the organization and is not functional, then it may be protected. However, competitors have the right to duplicate any design aspects of the phone that's needed for them to effectively compete. For instance, phones have a rectangular shape. If that was allowed to be protected and you had to make a circular phone, would anyone buy it? Characteristics that make it easier for the consumer to use the product may not be protected. How about the use of a swipe to turn on and open your phone? Apple argues that is protected. Is it? You have to think back to when it was first introduced. Is that something that identifies the iPhone or that's a characteristic that makes it easy for, to cons for consumers to switch from brand to brand, enhancing competition? Like everything else, the U.S. government tries to balance the right to free of free speech while protecting the strong mark of the product, not diluting it. First and foremost, and all forms of news reporting and commentary are exempt from liability. They may use the mark and may criticize it, talk positively about it, etc., as long as what they print or say is true. Second, a company is protected when it makes a fair use of a famous mark for comparative purchase purposes. Have you ever seen the Equate brand at Walmart and it says, compare active ingredients to Tylenol PM or something to that effect? They have the, the right to tell you what ingredients you're getting and to truly compare products that are similar. If you are using a mark and don't make money for it, then dilution doesn't apply. For instance, I often put company trademark icons in my slides. I'm doing, doing it for educational discussion and not to make money. That's a fair use. Do sucks sites cause dilution? Take a look at one of the many Facebook sucks sites. Is creating a sucks site protected by the First Amendment rights? You may say you don't like Walmart or Target or whoever, as long as you don't lie about it. Some argue that there is no confusion with sucks sites. I mean, we all know what sucks means, right? And we understand that the site is likely not a positive endorsement, but rather a crit critique. What if, however, you don't speak English? And a lot of the world doesn't. For more information, take a look at this short YouTube video on domain names that end in .suck. Organizations should protect their mark from cyber squatters. Cyber squatters register domain names for famous marks to which they are not entitled. They hope that the company will eventually pay them off to give up the domain name. To combat this, companies should register every possible no domain name and every possible sucks site that you can think of, and then try to use your legal team to get others off of any websites that represent your mark and to which they have no right. Who's in charge of all of these domain names? I can. Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers is the nonprofit organization responsible for managing the domain name system. The U.S. originally organized domain names, but got out of that business as people began to push for a more global presence. You see here some of the domain names that are available, with top-level domain names helping to sort by type of website, e.g. .com, .edu, .gov, etc. New top-level domain names and subdomains 
are being introduced to make it easier for the consumer to find what they're searching for. Take a look at this short YouTube video to see some of the new domain names. Keep in mind that domain names have trademark attributes and you cannot infringe on them unless you have a valid reason for doing so. Say your name is Taylor Swift and you registered that as your domain name. You have a valid right to that name. It's your name after all. You can't help it if Taylor Swift is now famous. But without a valid reason to have a domain name, you're going to lose in terms of violating the other's registered mark and diluting its value. Our first cyber squatter was Dennis Topin, who registered Panaflex.com, which included aerial views of Pana, Illinois. He didn't use the site and never sold anything. He said he would sell to Panavision for $13,000, so Panavision sued. The courts decided that Topin violated the Federal Trademark Dilution Act. Panavision's marks were famous. Use of Panavision's marks were, was commercial. He wanted to sell it to, for $13,000, and thus Topin violated federal and state dilution statutes and had to give up the website name. Meta tags are valid methods for helping people find your products and services. When you use meta tags, you should only use generic search terms or marks that you own. For instance, Apple should not use Samsung and its meta tags. It has no rights to Samsung, and Samsung doesn't want users who search for, for Samsung to end up at Google or vice versa, to end up at Apple or vice versa. A case that tested whether confusing customers with meta tags was Brookfield Communications, Inc. versus West Coast Entertainment Corporation. In this case, customers recognize that the website is different, like it's Samsung instead of Apple, but they might get interested and stay at the site to buy a Galaxy instead of the iPhone they plan to buy. Initial interest confusion is only a valid argument where the meta tag intends to trick customers and not when products are compared or when legitimate news commentary or satire is being used. Adware may also interfere with properly registered marks. Adware is software that is given to the user with advertisements embedded into the app. The user is typically informed through the click, right li click wrap license, you know, when you select I agree and don't read what it says. The case in question is 1-800-CONTACTS versus WINU in 2005. Users went to 1-800-CONTACTS to check prices for contact lenses, and then they saw competing products courtesy of the adware WINU. The courts ruled that the use of trademarks to launch advertisements does not by itself trigger trademark liability. Instead, seeing competing products is similar to how the grocery store organizes all of the cereals near each other to ease the consumer search requirements. You can watch this YouTube video to learn more about adware, malware, and phishing. How about auction sites like eBay? Are they responsible when counterfeit or lower quality goods are sold to their customers? Tiffany had a problem with counterfeit goods on eBay's site. eBay does make investments in anti-counterfeiting initiatives, but they didn't take all the measures that Tiffany wanted them to do. The courts determined, however, that eBay's use of Tiffany on its website is a fair use. Using the keywords and meta tags does not violate trademarks. After all, they're selling those very products. eBay is not liable for contributory trademark infringement. eBay can't be held liable simply because they know that some infringement is going to happen. That would interfere with legitimate sales of Tiffany products to consumers, after all. And although Tiffany wanted eBay to have more stringent anti-counterfeiting measures, eBay had invested a significant amount of money to reduce counterfeiting, and a reasonable person would conclude that the efforts were significant. Some argue that sites like eBay are contributory or vicarious trademark infringers. If they actually use the trademarks to further their own business opportunities, then they may be infringing. This is similar to the problems that peer-to-peer -peer file sharing presented. 
However, eBay has substantial legitimate business and they tried to prevent counterfeiting. Wemo Labs also brought suit against eBay. Wemo makes a number of products, including cell phone cases. Wemo brought forward a RICO lawsuit against PayPal and further alleged that eBay knowingly and deliberately facilitates, proliferates, and profits from sales of counterfeit and fake products on eBay. Wemo said they sent more than 5,000 notices of fake products to eBay, and eBay didn't respond with as stringent controls as they wanted to see. This case has not yet been decided as of early 2018, although it was dismissed in 2016 before being appealed again in 2017. Sounds almost impossible to protect your mark, doesn't it? Particularly for a software company. However, there are options. You can protect software expression, how the idea is expressed with copyright. That will only protect exact duplication or substantial similarity, perhaps. Then protect the idea with a patent. Finally, and most importantly, use click wrap agreements to set up expectations for those who use your product. Make the language as easy to understand as possible and be clear. You don't want to be taken to court over hard to understand language, and you don't want to fool the user. In summary, Companies must plan carefully and consider how to protect trademarks in domestic and international markets. Remedies are available for infringement, but owners must be vigilant about protecting their rights. Technology and digital media have made trademark infringement easier, less expensive, and more widespread. Those accused of infringing trademarks may claim fair use, arguing that the product or service cannot be identified without using the trademark. Claims of trademarks have priority when registering a domain name related to the trademark. Owners must be vigilant to prevent cyber squatters from capitalizing on the reputation of the mark. ICANN evaluates and approves requests for domain names, considering all forms of intellectual property protections.